Great founders look like you, every one of you, in this room. There are people like you who have made amazing companies. Hi there, I'm Chantel, and we're here today at the Hackathon in San Francisco at Hero City Draper University. Hey, my name is Ru Wickman, and uh, my background is actually fitness. Hi, my name is Fernando. I am currently 21 years old. Hi, my name is James Diorio, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. What will it take for technology to take the next leap forward? And they started here. They started in this building. They were one of the first, I believe, companies to get their start at Hero City. Hi, my name is Rene Diaz. My background is holistic therapy instructor and practitioner. Hi, I'm Maz. I'm here at DevCamp 2019. I'm Sam Armani, VP Business Development for Mimic. There is a famous saying in Silicon Valley show that says, imagine you can create internet from every device that you have. That's what Mimic does. And no, we were not inspired by the show. In fact, that was the quote I gave to the executive producer a few years ago. What will it take to change tomorrow for the better? My name is Eric Manganero and I'm with Fork Block. Hi, I'm Foo Styles and I'm from Blockchain PR and Women in Blockchain Foundation. Hi, I'm Dan Tolliver, co-author of the Toto Protocol and co-founder of Toto Network and Toto Q. My grandfather was the first venture capitalist in the Silicon Valley and he was, and then my dad was a major pioneer in venture capital, did a whole bunch of interesting pioneering work. And then I started to spread venture capital around the world and entrepreneurship around the world because I saw what it did for the Silicon Valley. It was quite extraordinary. You guys are the future and you guys are building amazing things. They're gonna make all of our lives amazing too. So thank you. Thank you guys for participating. What will it take for the next revolution to happen? Hello, my name is Jane Boo and I am Chief of Staff of Toda Network. Hi, I'm Hassan Khan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Toda Q. And we are the bank of the future in the Toda world. Nobody can stop a language if you educate a crowd of people like yourselves, a certain language, be able to talk to each other. No one can take that away from you. That is the power of decentralization. And that's what it, we're doing, that's our mission. It will take people, innovators and futurists. This is the evolution, the solution. This is Cyberlution, the next global revolution will be Cyber, created by One Day Productions. We're at Hero City, the heart of Silicon Valley. This is Dev Camp Hackathon, and welcome. I'm Miguel Francis, this is Tufi Saliba. Hey, uh, we're excited uh, today that uh, beyond the regular hackathon, what's happening is uh, generating a documentary around the revolution as it manifests itself. This is going to be about technology and humanity. How is it that technology is going to enable people to do a lot of cool things, or is it going to enslave people? Uh, one or the other. We are betting that it's going to enable people to do a lot of cool things and liberate people. Is Yash around? Where's Yash? Dude, right here, please stand up. All right, he's won five times. He's won five times. How old are you, man? 14 now. When we look at something that is revolutionary like email versus snail mail, 99.999% less friction, and it's 99.9999% faster, and you can measure it. That is revolutionary. WhatsApp is not revolutionary to SMS, it's just evolutionary. We're not interested in evolutionary projects, we're interested in revolutionary. Uh, what we're up to experience here with Internet of Value is going to enable every homo sapien to hold and transmit their value without any intermediary. And that is going to be revolutionary in so many aspects and how many elements are going to integrate into it. What do they have in Madagascar? Smartphones, network, and people. That's it. They don't have servers, they don't have cloud, they don't have databases, none of that. Something that is truly decentralized can run on only those three things. 
Sufi Saliba has been coding in AI and crypto since 2001. He's currently the CEO of Toda.network and co-author of the Toda Protocol, a communication layer protocol eliminating the dependency on replicated ledgers, enabling anyone to build user-centric solutions by separating the service layers from the dependency layer, attaining the ultimate setting in autonomous decentralized governance. Security by design introduces unprecedented efficiencies when compared to centralized systems, without any dependency on third parties. This film series will be documenting the birth of the revolution of innovative tech that can potentially change the future for the better. You know, if somebody documented the creation of SMTP, that would have been amazing. And uh, that's the thing. In, this is what we're historically, uh, when we look at uh, revolution, and it gets documented after the fact. You don't see the failures. You see just the successes. I've been in startups all my life, and the majority of startups end up failing. The majority of projects end up failing. There's no shame in failing. There's shame in not trying. And the cool thing about hackathons is that people try. We're here uh, with our partners Toda to uh, present a challenge using Mimic Edge SDK. I am now a UX designer, so I transitioned to UX design to incorporate that into technology. I've been in the space for about a quarter century, uh, both technology, finance, and crypto. And we're here to actually provide the Toda platform for all of those hackers and coders so that they can build solutions and we can take them to market to start changing people and businesses' lives. Developer Camp 2019 was organized by Dom Segola and Jeremy Johnstone, visionaries who see the benefit of creating a platform for kickstarting an idea and bringing it to fruition, giving the community of developers, programmers, designers, and newcomers a way into building that future. Tim Draper's Hero City is a perfect playground for innovation. The first day of the hackathon allowed people to meet each other and find the proper team to bring their ideas to life. The key, though, is simplicity. You have 48 hours from now to build something and make it go. I would recommend that you focus on making it ultra simple and actually making it work because the crowd loves to see things go. Many developers, as you can see here, they form like groups. They work on a certain uh, project. There are some other uh, developers over there. They will demo tomorrow. Everybody they're working on things, they're going to demo tomorrow. Hey guys, a quick question. Uh, who of your team is the least technical and the most vocal? Fantastic. Would you mind telling us in 30 seconds uh, what are you working on in this hackathon we're trying to achieve that doesn't exist in this uh, world today? So we're working on a mobile application that will generate multi-destinational routes that are the most efficient. So instead of having to map yourself from each individual place, one after another, you just give it a list of tasks or places that you want to go, and it will generate a complete route from start to finish. My name is Laurel, and I'm trying to solve productivity for creatives. So for example, I find that a lot of engineers build to-do lists that look like to-do lists, but they don't work like um, like an artist or creative person solves a problem. Okay. So you kind of write things down in your head and then you organize it instead of having a linear structure. So it's called Untangled, and we're trying to make it for creatives by creatives. Right now we're trying to create a online version of Fred's Coffee Shop where people would be able to connect and be able to pre-order the items uh, so they could skip the line. Basically, it's just a way for people to be able to actually have a place to be able to consume their cannabis products in peace and be able to share it with others and possibly even meeting new people. You, you sound like you have questions? Yeah, we were actually working on a project outside and we were looking to talk to some like people who have had companies before because we're... Yeah, uh, you know any project? I, I this is a dev camp hackathon when uh, was presented that it's like even if the project is being worked on outside uh, and you do some modification during the hackathon, as long as it's it happened during the hackathon, you can showcase it and tell the world here yeah, this was done A B C D E F were done outside and then we just worked on G during the hackathon. So I encourage you to do that. Did you know that? No, 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 we didn't. So we'll definitely probably. Fantastic. Awesome. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. 
So people come together, they brainstorm ideas, they have about 48 hours to get cracking, to, to meet each other, That's and right. then develop. That's right. So think of and like, then execute. Exactly. If you think of like how startups usually take on average five, six years. This is going to take 48 hours from the time people they meet each other to the time they actually launch a project to the time they uh, put it together, uh, write codes, and show it on uh, Sunday. Dev Camp was spilling up with creative energy. People were coming in to make new connections, to find like-minded developers, and speak to professionals from companies like Tota, Mimic, Kintone, and Flutter, who were all there to provide their tools for developing the future. A general theme of diversity and inclusion was ever so present. Janice Frazier, prominent startup founder and coach with an extensive career innovating at successful companies, shared her thoughts and experience on diversity in the industry. This idea, this profoundly optimistic idea that we are allowed to invent the future, that's not just in the hands of some of us, that is actually in the hands of all of us. If you decide to do this entrepreneurship thing, I am all in favor of it and I know you can do it and I know you can do it because I did it and I didn't have any right to believe I could. This was taken today. These are the top, whatever, I don't, didn't count, maybe 20 people that are search results for venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. And they're all men. Most of them are white. So the bias is real, but the truth is that you're up to the challenge. So if we accept the truth that there is bias, and if we accept the truth that we can get through it anyway, then we have a chance to change the world and do something profound and awesome. Revolutionary with blockchain. This isn't tied to equity. It's not tied to the value of a company. It's tied to, this, to the size of a network, the passion of a network, jumping into a Kickstarter for societal transformation. Are you a team working on a project? Yeah. yeah fantastic. Uh, would you mind uh, spending 30 seconds telling us what you're trying to solve? Who would like to take uh, this? Kids, you know, walking around the school and not really having anything to do when they're walking and changing classes. So me and my friends are kind of competitive and we. I thought it'd be nice to make a game where you have to go around the school and actually yeah. gather, uh, gather, gather collectible things and be competitive about the amount of points you get from them. We want to use the Tota accounts and then we want to use the file objects to represent the locations, the items. And so the so at the beginning of the day, the kids can get a quest that would be like, you know, find a sword, kill a spider, get so many coins. And then the, um, the players have to use their phone to the physical location to loot the, the location, and then they'll get the reward. And I think the, the ability to um, assign ownership, transfer ownership, and limit the ownership is, is what we're looking for. So we might even run the whole thing off the of Toto without any other data source. Fantastic. This is so good to hear. I look forward to seeing your demo tomorrow. We are uh, creating a game app to teach kids uh, very early in their educational career how to learn binary conversions through gamification. Fantastic. Uh, and is there any incentive you're trying to put to the kids? Well, we're actually bringing an environmental element to it, so they're going to learn different challenges through the problems. So the problems, will, they'll be taken through a hurricane, a mudslide, and the different uh, world problems that we're having today. Fantastic. We're looking forward to seeing your demo tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there you go. we have another uh, team members here working on the Mimic on uh, Tora. So would you like to, to tell us what uh, you intend on showcasing tomorrow? Uh, all right. So we have uh, an open challenge that pretty much using Mimic SDK and Toda as the protocol to basically create almost like a rental uh, content model so that uh, your content remains on your device and you can rent it to people for a period of time so there will be a Toda protocol exchange uh, for that uh, kind of a notes and then uh, depending on how much I have received I can open my content for the duration of that token. Uh, what are you trying to solve in this hackathon that doesn't exist in the world today? So I'm building Lolly, which is a sexual consent app for women based on the blockchain because apparently he said, she said is a problem and yes and no are too ambiguous. So we are building a consent app that allows 
people to document their consent uh, to reduce friction later. Thirty seconds spent with us. What are you trying to solve that doesn't exist in the world today? Um, well, like kind of. I don't know if I want to put it out there right now. We're just kind of in stealth mode and trying to figure out uh, what that sort of queue is suitable for what we're trying to build. So, so you're still in stealth and you're not ready. You may tell us tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Dan. Matri. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> Kay. And Jake. And what we're trying to do, we're creating a project called Image Mark, and the idea is to take an image that you've photographed and create a watermark. It's a service where you'll upload the image, uh, it'll create a watermark on that image, and that's what you'll distribute as a watermark version. If it's delivered from your website, there'll be some embedded code that you'll add that'll go retrieve the missing pieces so that it only displays on your website. If someone grabs and tries to drag and drop it and save the picture, they get the watermark version with the idea that uh, those pieces, the modular pieces, could be managed in various ways. So you might manage it a traditional database or you might manage it through blockchain. Uh, all right, so let's see who else is... Uh... A natural interviewer, I gotta tell you. <laughs> The demo day has begun, and the winners will be judged by the grand jury. Every team was full of passion and ideas. Google Maps does offer multiple locations, but you have to select them individually and put in the address. And with Waze, there's a one-stop limit. So our solution statement was to do a mobile navigation application that you can enter multiple places of interest or tasks, and it ultimate and automatically generates the most time-efficient route from beginning to end. So what I'm saying is we can teach these skills, these really foundational computer skills, super early. That's when kids are, their brains are young and fluid and absorbent, and they want to learn and they have fun doing it. Every team was ready to stand up for its project until the very end. Unfortunately, like a lot of people in the Bay Area, Katie has roommates, and her landlord doesn't allow smoking in the, in the apartment. Luckily, Katie has recently discovered this new and convenient place called Fred's Coffee Shop, where she can work on her laptop, enjoy her cannabis, have a delicious snack, and even socialize with friends when she's done working for the day. You can then hook it up with tokenization, add blockchain, and other sorts of features to this service, and we plan to do that with the idea that the image itself then gets recreated on the browser client. Every team was out to innovate and create something new. You get paid features with advanced analytics, and we've talked about prepaid launching. Uh, we have a two-year plan, and if you want to be added to our beta list, email laurel at checkuntangled with an ed dot com. Thank you. Thank you. Then there's Match. That's the last guy who asked me out on Match. I'm member number 21. I've been at this for a really, really long time. But does Ray look like a good match for me? They don't care. He's a paying member. Means he can message anybody, including me. And then there's Bumble, which is filled with fake people. There were many categories at Def Camp, like most inspirational, most educational, best game, most revolutionary, and even the props title for those that didn't succeed but had a very good run. The innovators of the future, these developers have been at it for almost nine hours now. It's, it's you know, we've been here since 11, it's 8 uh, p.m. now, so uh, a lot of them have wrapped their project. Let's see what the progress is. I see Adrienne, how are you? How's, how's, how's everything, tell us? Are you, are you getting it done? No. Oh. No. Long day though. Very long day. I'm a former high-tech priestess. I haven't developed in almost 20 years. 
and so it took about four hours to get Flutter installed, and then I was trying to make it do what I wanted it to do, and it's, I'm so used to WYSIWYG and drag and drop, and it just doesn't do that, so I'm going to need more than the time allotted to get what I wanted done, done. So that's frustrating, but that's a hackathon. That's you, actually part of the lesson of being in a hackathon, uh, how to pivot, how to reduce your scope down to something that's actually achievable in a small amount of time, uh, get over your necessity to be perfect, which when I code, I have that problem because I, I used to do quality assurance, so I used to do unit testing, I used to fix people's code, so I have a hard time writing sloppy code even if it works. So I have a lot more ideas how I'm going to put this thing together. I just wish I had the resources to do it in the weekend because I really had this fantasy that I was going to be able to submit to the App Store on Monday and then be live for Valentine's Day. Oh, yes. No, no, no. no but but honestly, not right crunch now. time? Just, just, just crunching? Just not in the mood. Just okay, not in the mood. crunching. Like, See, people are yeah. crunching. That's the thing. Yeah. When you crunch, you know, I, I feel you. No, no, but you're, but you're crunching. You're I'm taking it on the chin. That's all. You know? Like, you know, you always you get a 10 count in life, right? And that's when you decide. So you're going to get up or not. And sometimes you just, you know, you, you live to fight another day. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow either way. Best of luck. All right? See, developing, developing. It's not an easy thing. It takes patience, discipline, and, you know, luck. A lot of the obstacles are having to do with deploying it, d deploying it on a, a production server to test it out. Um, because ultimately, you got to test out the software on the, in the real place. So that's where we're at right now. Um, just trying to make it work. Out of the many contestants we show in this film, there were many more, and it was difficult to catch everyone, but there is one presentation that definitely caught our attention. So you press the green flag to start, and you have a unicorn and stars falling from the sky. Each star is worth one point, and you have three lives at first. If the star falls and touch the ground, then that's minus one point. If you have zero points, then it'll tell then the unicorn will tell you your score and then you can click the green flag to start again. You're shipping an app right now. And you figured this out by yourself. Well, I got like a little bit of help with the star falling from my teacher, but that's pretty much all. Wow. What grade are you in? Fourth. Many of these developer campers built their projects on top of Tota using the Tota Q API. Let's look at some of the people behind the Tota.network team to get a better idea of what Tota does for people with ideas and a need of a protocol that is secure, efficient, confidential, scalable, and interoperable. Twitter Network is here looking for developers, looking for projects, looking for people who have a problem that the Twitter protocol can help to efficiently solve. And then Twitter Q is here because its enterprise offering of Twitter as a service is being used as the basis for people to try out the Twitter protocol. So we've got, I think, eight projects today that over the last 24 hours have been built on the Twitter protocol that are actively using it. It's, it's amazing. And the part that's really exciting is we've been waiting uh, a decade to have decentralized technologies actually show relevance like at scale, right? Like at a national scale or a large business scale where it really matters to people, right? And you can feel the benefit, you can feel the cost saving or the immutability or the trust, right? When you're talking about thousands or millions of people. Now we can do that. So now that we're just crossing the start line, we're very motivated to uh, get going. Um, within TotaQ, we've probably spent uh, two years with an ever-growing team and actually just building all the Tota protocol software. Now it's time to put it to use. Everyone says they have a scalable solution. Everyone says that they've got um, it's efficient. Everyone said that it's cost effective. But what I found is they really have created something unique. It's a different way to think about creating technologies. And it's going to create some really great opportunities for us to fulfill on the promise of blockchain. 
we like all of the teams that we're building things on Toto. I think they're all great. So in general, any of those that want to move forward with that, uh, just like with Mimic, we're, we're happy to work with them and continue to support them in that way. Uh, but Loot Quest in particular uh, is one that, that's the one that we're bringing in to our next cohort as part of our incubator, so we'll support them in that way. So that was for Toto Q Wallet and for the Toto Cohort Challenge. And then we have Mimic, right? Or is there more, more Toto stuff? With Mimic, uh, we want to give um, uh, Campbell the first prize, which is the laptop. Hyperlocal. Hyperlocal. Uh, sorry, uh, Game Store gets the Samsung Note. Yes. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Thank and you. And then the Loli. Uh, yeah. uh, Loli, I yes. guess. Sure. Uh, we give them, we give her 40 hours of free support for developing her application. After the jurors had their verdicts in place, the fates were sealed. It was time for the award ceremony. The top four awards went to Game Store, being the most revolutionary video game distribution and hosting platform built using Tota and Mimic, the user-friendly Tota Q for the Tota Q Corporate Challenge, a storage for anything you can think of for the Tota Q Protocol, and another Tota Corporate Challenge award went to Hyperlocal, a blockchain-based app used to discover people and make valuable local connections. And the best game award with those amazing perks and prizes practically becoming a part of Tota went to the father and son duo, the Roa family with Loot Quester, a blockchain-based location adventure game with augmented reality and cool loot to be found. It's still uh, like something I don't feel I fully grasped what, what just happened, right? When we came here, we had we uh, didn't have a lot of understanding of the Tota protocol and the, the Tota as a company. And going through the past couple of days, you know, getting the, you know, being able to review the technology, get the support, uh, be able to build something really cool completely on that platform, it, it's been been awesome. It's meant to be a community builder. It's meant to bring people together on a, on a common foundation, working towards a common goal. Very interesting hackathon. Uh, there were some pretty good projects out there as well, and in particular, um, the Mimic guys, they were really helpful and they were here. And, you know, I was able to talk to Dan and the other people from Toto Q to get things working as well. Um, so things just kind of rolled smoothly for that. There were no losers at Def Camp 2019. Remember, there's no shame in failing. There's only shame in not trying. Adrienne with Lolly got the props award as 40 hours of support from Mimic to fix any issues she might have had during the hackathon. Laurel and her team with Untangled got the best design award. Fernando got best new developer. While Chrissy and the Navi team got the prize for the most organized. The wonderful Teresa and Binaru took the most educational award. And Dan with ImageMark took home the best developer tool title. Everyone who participated in Def Camp 2019 took home cool prizes and great memories and friendships that otherwise would have been left untouched. It's not as competitive as other places. It's much more supportive. It's much more collaborative. And so what we try to do is pair people up with folks of different backgrounds, so designer, developer, a new person with a mentor, a uh, person with some kind of code experience with a person with another kind of code experience. And so in that way, it's about uh, minting teams, and it's about supporting those teams. So they come here, they meet here, and then we support them throughout the year. Anyone is welcome, and our main message is inclusion and diversity. And from that, we try to empower people to be successful and continue on. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And is this Wilder? Hello, yep. Wilder. Can I say hello? <laughs> I've been doing hackathons all my life, and this is the first time I feel that this uh, movement of hackathon doing revolutionary things and they're being documented is just fascinating. And I'm really hoping that a lot of people that are watching this, they're able to contribute to this revolution, not just like sit back and not do anything about it. There's a role for each and every one of us. There's a role for people that are even not developers. This is not just about coders, whatnot. Everybody who's good at one thing, just one thing, 
you can contribute to a hackathon. So um, revolutions don't just get created by a single person, it's a community, and we're hoping that we can grow this community further and we can truly deliver it to the remaining 99.8% of the planet, so. The future will be cyber. As other systems fail the society, it is innovative tech and pioneers like these that will no doubt lead the world to a revolution in this new digital age of decentralized value systems and platforms that allow us to finally take control of what's rightfully ours. Stay tuned as we bring you more on the ever-changing world of innovation. I'm Miguel Francis Santiago and this is Cyberlution. The next revolution will be cyber. Take one. Ah. <laughs>